I'd like to call to order the Park and Recreation Committee meeting from uh, Monday, October, uh, Monday, Monday, September 14th, 2015. Mm -hmm. Don't push it. I'm pushing it. So before we get to our agenda, um, I would like to invite Barbara Pine to come. <laughs> So, Barbara. Ms. Rose. Hi. <laughs> we want to present you oh, with thank this. Thank you. Um, we really will miss you. And you have been on Park and Rec for eight years. You have been our eight. vice chair for years. Um, we appreciate everything you have done. You have brought really a lot to the commission. You have brought us a lot of uh, initiative, a lot of wonderful ideas. You've worked with the parks at Jacobs. You've worked on programming. You've worked on this building, helping us with the upkeep. Oh, we're going to miss you. We really will. And we also know that you are going to be in programming here, so we hope that you will continue to give us your input. Okay, I will. And Thank come you. come in, visit us, and say hi. Thank you. It's been my real pleasure to serve. Well, this we is, I think, you. the hardest working department in town. Well, thank you. I really think it is. No, really, I think it is. I mean, people don't realize how much goes on here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I know you do, and you do a lot with the staff, too, and, and I think everybody really appreciates it. And you see how much they do, so, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. well appreciated. Well, I'll continue to be a spokesperson. We love it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh. oh, yes, do you need the box? Okay, public forum. <coughs> I need one copy, so we can you take one and pass around. There should be enough there. Joe Nugent, 423 New Whitfield Street. <coughs> this uh, letter I'm passing around, this ran in the uh, two newspapers back in early July, more or less, and it's a, a mission that I'm involved with. Essentially what it says is, at what end of the leash is a smarter animal? If you are a responsible dog owner and clean up after your dog does its business on public areas, the job is not complete until you place the small plastic bag into the trash. Do not bag the waste and then leave it on the bag or someone's lawn or in a public right away. If you do, it means that someone else has to retrieve this item and properly dispose of it. There's no such creature as the doo-doo fairy that comes along and retrieves your pet's waste during the darkness of night. Animal waste can be a major source of non-contact point solution, pollution <laughs> within our waterways. Would you feel comfortable in an area and have little bags of dog waste floating in a swimming area and have little bags of dog waste floating by. Be the smart animal at the end of the lease, clean up and treat your pet's waste. <clears throat> Reason why I'm here tonight is I went before the police commission, see if we can get signage up. There are towns, municipalities in Connecticut that has a sign that specifies that you are responsible for cleaning up after your pet and disposing of the waste properly. So I'm trying to get one of the departments in the town of Guilford to absorb the cost of purchasing the signs. We're into the new budget year, so we are flush with funds. So now is the time. <laughs> I don't know about that. Now is the time to get this done. I went before the police department, I'm before Park and Rec, and I'll go before the Public Works also. It's something that I'm involved in because I find it. It's a quality of life issue. Absolutely. I walk my dog into town every Sunday, then I walk my dog uh, all around the neighborhood four or five times a day, believe it or not. And I find it disgusting when I see these little bags sitting on a sidewalk or sitting on a lawn. Something has to be done about it. Okay. That's part one. Okay. Part two, Chittenden Park, where a lot of dogs run, walk, etc., etc. There's no podium with the disposal, with the doggy, uh, with the bag, uh, you know, dispensers on it. And it should be, because the dogs are in that area just as much as they are on the beach, believe it or not, where they shouldn't be. And on the marina, there's also a, a dispenser for the doggy cleanup bag. But there should be something down at Chittenden Park. Okay. Agreed? Agreed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Yeah, the ones we have are Chaffin's, Chittenden, and Agreed. 
Illinois, and there's somebody that Adams now. He said just in Chaffinch. There isn't one in Chaffinch. No. That's no. in Chaffinch. That's in Chaffinch. Chaffinch. Jacobs and the Greens is where we have. That's correct. Yeah. But, you know, there should be one in Chittenden because many people, especially now that it's a trailhead. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. so common sense would say that we should have one there. So we can do that. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Okay, moving on with the agenda. Correspondence. Um, we have in our packet a letter that um, Claire had written, um, actually thanking the lifeguards who were at the lake at uh, the holiday weekend, and apparently there were some problems, and they handled themselves, as you said, with grace, and they were very professional. So we appreciate that. And Rick just handed us letters that he actually wrote to the lifeguards who were there. You know, and again, praising them for a job well done. So I think we are very lucky to have very professional lifeguards. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. The approval of the August third, <coughs> twenty fifteen minutes. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Mm -mm. I need to abstain. Me too. Same. Well, let me, I haven't called for the vote yet. Give me a minute. <laughs> oh. Well, she's abstaining. I'll just do. Give me a minute. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstentions? So, okay. so noted. Okay. Department reports. Do you want to do the bills? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm skipping the bills. Yes, let's do the bills. Watch your test, remember? Yeah. Trying to beat the old one. Is this what um, we had to pull out from last time or that we didn't have? Uh, which one was that? Do you remember? For August. Last time we didn't. We yeah. didn't have some of the bills or we were making sure that we weren't Not double. Doubling. Doubling. Yeah, we double check. We're, we're okay. Okay. There were some that uh, okay, we hadn't it. gotten, I think, from, um, like, for example, uh, let's see. Well, some of the bills here are, are still things that were from um, last fiscal year. So at, some of these are actually charged back to last fiscal year, which we should have made a note on here. But like mm -hmm. budget blinds, for example. Yeah, I was going to question that. Those are blinds we put in the um, Manukatuck room and the Quantapot room. We never had any shades in there. Uh -huh. So we have them now. Sometimes if there's a, a film group or something, they, you, you can't darken the room. So we have we've shades similar to this in those rooms now. Okay. That's what that was. But that was done back in uh, June, and we, we never got the invoice back then. So that's, that's actually technically charged back to last fiscal year. Okay. I just had a question on Ever, one of the Eversource. It was unusually large out of the normal. The 2,400? Yeah. That's the community center? Okay. Yeah. So. And, you know, a lot of air conditioning th yeah. that month. Summertime use. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to accept the uh, bills for $130,303.14. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Now we're ready for our reports. Rick, anything to add on your director's report? Um, no, unless there are any questions on anything any there. Some of it is under the you know agenda items anyway. Um, on uh, 11, met with Jim Portley, Jim Mazza, Cliff Grimmer about GHS uh, Science Wing and Future Fitness Center, um, and then toured the building with Cliff and Joe and Steve. Is is that going to be set up that we can go and do a site walk on that or to tour? Yeah, the probably. Once, they're they were basically the very early stages of, of the demolition when we went, right. where they were starting to knock down walls. So you kind of get an idea of the size of the room, which is going to be a pretty good size. Two rooms, one's a pretty good size. I, I don't know the 
square footage, and then there's one that's a little smaller that would be um, the big one is going to have the, the, the weights. The other one have some spin bikes and rowing machines, you know, ergometer type things. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, as far as I know, based on some of the discussions, is that the earliest we'd have any access to doing anything would be uh, in the spring. Oh, okay. So if, if at some point, if the commission wanted to go in and walk it, I, you know, I'm sure we could set that up. Mm -hmm. Well, I think at some point we should. Yeah. yeah. We have a while for that. Yeah. yeah. Time. Well, I just have a quick question for you about the softball fields, number three. I, I drove by the school for the first time today. It was quiet and there's nobody there. The parking seems to be a little bit, bit of a challenge of that for those fields in the back. I mean, are they going to have to park all the way up by yeah. New England Road in order to. Oh, uh, no. Well, there's the, there's the parking. You just by go the down. tennis course. Oh, no. If you go down. Um, well, the front of the building has some parking too. It will, but there's parking on the west side, the west entrance of the school, like okay. adjacent to the, the material school? field. I did. So there's that parking. So that, that's okay. I didn't know. If, um, that just seemed like it was going to be for peace for people to walk to get to the uh, to their games. I, um, I realize it is what it is, but yeah. you know, it's kind of chunked in uh, and jammed in back there. But uh, our, our concern on that one was that the uh, design didn't really show any access to the JV softball field for our maintenance equipment. It was a four foot wide sidewalk and our equipment is wider than that. And so um, I had seen that um, on the blueprint and then I, I, we had a discussion about it at the field committee meeting and then I set up a meeting with the project manager there from the uh, company that's doing the building uh, and with the, um, the landscape architect who did the design and Tony and I met with him and we point that out, this is going to be a problem. We have no way to get there with our equipment to put clay on the field or do the work we have to do. So we had suggested they widen that. Mm. Uh, and I, I went to the uh, John Kennedy, who's the vice chair of the field committee, and I went to the school building committee meeting um, uh, about a, three weeks, a month ago, I guess, and we, we brought that to them, too, that we, we requested they widen that. And I, I hope they're going to because we have, um, I think they agreed to do that. That's one of the things that really has to be done because we don't have a way to get in there mm. to maintain it. Oh, that's the problem. Yeah. But it's going to be a beautiful field. It'll be very, very nice. As long as we can maintain it. Yes, <laughs> yes. as long as we can maintain it. Yeah. Okay, any other questions for Rick? Any questions or comments on the other department reports? If I could just make a comment on Tony's report. Sure. I think it's good. He, he kind of gave you a pretty good smattering of what the, our parks maintenance guys do. Yes. I think a lot of people think all they do is mow and take care of the athletic no. fields. But see the, all the stuff like setting up the water slide for Camp Manukatuck and cleaning the beaches that we do uh, weekly and, um, you know, uh, putting away camp equipment, set up the showmobile as he shows ten times oh, the stage was yeah. moved uh, just in about one month. Um, and so you get an idea of the multiplicity of the things that our parks maintenance guys do. It's much more than mowing and grooming ball fields. My question about the ball fields. Um, irrigation. How do we determine when is the time to turn on the water and when to wait for the rain to come to? Uh, the only reason why I ask is that um, when the Guilford um, girls varsity had their uh, soccer jamboree uh, and they had teams from out of town at late, at late yeah. the fields were pretty They've been dry. They we've had dry. a problem with irrigation there, okay. which I notified the school ahead of time. They knew that that was going to be an issue. Okay. Um, and actually, it, it came on that morning. I had to go with a guy to go shut it off okay. uh, that Saturday morning. Um, um, there's a problem with something that's called the uh, pump relay switch. And we had to order a new one. We ordered one with a company to put it in. They went to put it in Friday, this last Friday. They brought the wrong switch, so we got to get another one and put it in. So um, the irrigation works, but it's sporadic. There's a couple. There are a couple zones that are not working very well, mm -hmm. and so we know we've had problems there. We had problems at uh, Bittner. Uh, the irrigation pump went out, so we, you saw that in the bills there was one for like twenty eight hundred dollars from Brantford Wim Nelson. That was a new pump we had to buy for uh, uh, Bittner. There have been some problems with. Um, um, material field with an irrigation head that blew out. So we just have had a lot of, of course you find it out when you have a real dry summer like that. Absolutely. That's when you know yeah. you have problems with irrigation. Well, there's no question the fact <laughs> yeah. that the, the earth was scorched yeah. by, by constant yeah. 90 degree weather. Yeah. Um, could you refresh me what exactly is irrigated at Cox and what is not irrigated? Nothing at Cox. No, nothing is Cox. Correct. Okay. okay. It, there will be though. That's, um, 
in the uh, money we have in our five-year plan, I think next year and year after, we have money to renovate those fields. And um, I think I might have, I don't know if I mentioned in my report, but we, we got uh, $5,000 donated from each of the, each of, from uh, youth lacrosse, youth soccer, rush soccer, and Gilbert High School Athletics. So between those four organizations, they gave us $20,000 for the engineering study. And we went to the Board of Selectmen to prove uh, Malone McBroom that we have contracted with to do the uh, okay. engineering plan to design the work that we're going to be doing up at Cox. Part of that will be irrigating the north and south, the two upper fields of irrigated when that's done. Okay. Well, weren't we going to um, repair the And renovate the one to the left, the south the, field. The south Correct. field. Okay, because yeah. it has the huge swale. It's going to be bulldozed, regraded, and uh, and then both fields are going to be irrigated. At there. that point, after the renovations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the lower Cox field, is that uh, no, is no, that no wish list right now? Maybe yeah. in the future, but right okay. now it's just the two upper fields. Okay. It has a great roll to it. It looks, it rolls just like an artificial turf, but yeah. you can tell it's not, Yeah. it's it's, it's kind of burnt, it's kind of burned out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This has been a bad year for everything. It was a very bad year yeah. for it. Any other comments on the mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, the report of the commission's standing fields. Rick, anything? Uh, standing fields, uh, well, I just mentioned the Cox contract and I, that we contracted out the um, uh, engineering firm. And we, I just want to publicly thank, as I just did, Youth Lacrosse, Soccer Club of Guilford, Rush, and Guilford High School Athletics because they each contributed five thousand dollars for us to do this. We have in our budget one hundred fifty thousand for the renovations, um, but the the users of the field are, are paying for the uh, the engineering study. So we're appreciative of the partnership we have with those four organizations to help us get the, the plan uh, done. Uh, so that, that we've been talking about that, um, and then. Um, at the last field committee meeting, Little League has made a request, which I, th I think at some point they should come here too. Um, they they want to do some fundraising. They, they, they would like to install lights on the Adams to Little League fields at Adams School. I don't know if you're aware of that, John, but because uh, I know you umpire with them. But um, we've been thinking about that for years. Yeah. So they came yeah. to the field committee, got some input. We you know we told them they have to get planning and zoning approval, board of education approval. Um, and I, I just got an email today. They they've spoken with a couple of representatives of those groups, and it sounds like there's. I, I wouldn't exactly say they have a green light, but they didn't get a stoplight, a red light. Okay. So, I think they're going to um, pursue it a little bit more. Um, uh, I had suggested to them if you're trying to do some fundraising, I, I think a priority is to irrigate those fields. Literally, doesn't end June 20th anymore. It goes to mid-August or at least early August. They have tournaments and state tournaments they've been hosting here. And uh, when you have a year like this, where that you know we have irrigation on the infields, but not the outfields, um, that you know they can be bone dry and they kind of look like shredded wheat this time of year. They're just dry. Yeah. And um, you know we kind of try to give them a little direction if they're looking to do some improvements. I think they really should look at irrigation first to get that up and running. Um, but they are definitely interested in going forward with the uh, lights on that field. And so we'll stay stay tuned on that. Keep you posted and where they are with that. And I, th I think those are the main things that Stanley Fields has been uh, dealing with. And, you know, the, the, the improvements that we talked about at the uh, uh, softball field at the high school, the, the maintenance issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, unfinished business. The dog park. <laughs> you have in our packets, we received a letter from Marilyn Glasser with her recommendations. <clears throat> So, Rick, do you want to start? Or? Yeah, so uh, Jack Penders and I walked with her um, to, um, she says four areas. I guess it was four. I mean, mm -hmm. four. We, we looked at, uh, at Peddlers, we looked at both the lower area, uh, the upper area, you know, beyond the parking lot that we had talked about is one possibility. Uh, at Baldwin, we looked at two spots at Baldwin. Um, if you're going all the way down the end of Bullard Drive, all the way to the end, and go through past a chain to the left are a lot of dirt piles there are part of the high school project right now is where they've been leaving the uh, the topsoil and, and uh, dirt there that they'll eventually bring back to the high school uh, we looked at that and then the rear field that bald one um, it's part of the above the uh, septic field it's just a, kind of a occasional practice field for lacrosse and uh, football back there the school does use it occasionally for um, field day events uh, and then we went to uh, Nut Plains and in Up Plains, it's the area, if you're walking 
driving into the park. Immediately to the right, before you even get to the parking lot, there's a wooded area adjacent to uh, Nut Plains Road. Um, so we looked at, at all those, and you can see her recommendations here. Uh, her first choice was Baldwin, um, partly because it's an open field, basically be put up a fence. Um, but access is a little bit harder, it's a little bit farther, we'd have to do, create some access to get in there. Um, the, the school system is, I wouldn't want to say they're not supportive of being there, I think they would prefer it not be there. There's, there's a kind of a new, relatively r recent uh, policy maybe, or guidelines, about not inviting people who are not part of the school on school property during the school day. Um, and it's, it's kind of a, you, you can understand why there are reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And so I think for that and maybe some other reasons, plus they do use that a little bit, not a lot, but they do use it for occasional yeah. field day and, yeah. uh, back there. Um, so uh, I, I don't think that there's a lot of wide open welcome arms to come and let that be a, a location. I agree. Um, Security. I think right. security for security reasons and, and a lot of kids being around. I don't know that that too. would be my first choice to yeah. put a, a dog mm -hmm. park. Plus, they do use it even if it's twice Absolutely. a year. Absolutely. Right, you know, they, they have a use for it. And, and you know, if you look at her recommendation, her uh, Marilyn Glass's recommendation, the other reason she liked that because that that's the only place water. that could possibly right. have water, and she's kind of. That. And that I would say system, which that's a kind of a big plus to be able to have water for it. But I, but as I, I'm sure you hear from uh, Catherine and Joanne and others who are involved in dog parks, that that probably isn't a big big deal breaker having water or not. Her second um, choice was not Plains Park. Um, I think part of the reason was um, number one, it's a park already. It's it's a park. Um, there are no uh, residences anywhere really near the area that that we would. Uh, be going here. Uh, directly to the north is a cemetery. Um, is this where the field is? neighbors down there? There is. Yeah. <laughs> if we, oh, in the cemetery? Yeah. Well, they're very quiet neighbors, but <laughs> 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 further down. Well, I thought you were going to say we're going to stir those neighbors up. We're in big trouble. No, but where you're thinking to put this, there are homes back there. Mm. There's two homes, and it would be right next to my sister in law's house. Are there so homes there are, right? there are home, yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't see any houses in there. In fact, Kevin gave me kind of a map, and we didn't see any houses on, on the map of that. I'll show you the map later okay. uh, when well, we're looking. There are, there are we're not looking way in the back, back, not by the uh, tree. Stump dump. Yeah, we're not going. This is right adjacent to Nut Plains Road, mm -hmm. not down this in the right back at all. Oh, oh, okay. it's right the community. Up by the I know what you're talking about. You're thinking like maybe down by the down community back where, the, where the gardens the used to be. Oak yeah, the gardens. trees and gardens. Yeah, and yeah, no, it's not. It's not that far. Oh, okay. Then okay. I misunderstood. Yeah, it's right adjacent to Nut Plains Road. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, I guess one of the uh, pros pluses for that is that. Um, it, it's pretty right there adjacent to the parking lot. Yeah. And if you remember at our meeting last week, there was a gentleman in a wheelchair mm -hmm. who doesn't have mm -hmm. a dog, but said, boy, if I had one and I could get there, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, accessibility would be very easy uh, in this location. Okay. Um, You've already, there would be dogs on this side of the cemetery and everybody takes their dogs down Sullivan Drive and walks their dogs on uh, Goss. Goss property, mm -hmm. so it's like, are they going to get mixed up as to which is the dog park and which isn't? Because they pretty much let their dogs run down off the Goss property, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing they, that they out. They do, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I know people that do that. Pretty so well separated. Perhaps they would bring it, it, it was clear it was in Nut Plains Park. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it would be pretty obvious because obviously it would be publicized. Yes, a gated area. Yeah. Would be a gated area. Um, and then her, her next uh, third choice was the upper area at Peddler's, um, beyond the parking lot. I think we, we walked that area, didn't we, when we yes, did the yes. park walk? Yep. Um, she pretty much ruled out the lower area as, you know, for all the issues that we, we know are issues there, mm -hmm. concerns with neighbors and um, the wet areas and so on. Uh, so that, that would pretty much be out of the question. Um, so you know, I don't know if you um, if you want to try to make a uh, a decision tonight, or at least a preliminary decision of uh, picking a spot, or do you want to go as a commission and visit um, no. Nut Plains, and you know, I before if that's the spot you're thinking of, you. um, yeah, it's up to the commission what you what you'd like to do. I'd like to see Nut Plains. 
Yeah. We didn't do that. I thought no. we, yeah, we didn't do that. No, okay. no. Being that it seems. Um, it, I'd love to just move it along. Is there a way we can mm -hmm. sort of, I mean, then, we're, then we have to wait another month. Can we make a, a meeting date just to meet? Um, yeah. Well, just to give you a little bit of perspective, Wallingford just opened up their brand new dog park last week. Week before, um, it took them three years to put it together. Through all the concerns of the other residents, all of the necessities about putting it together, the, the construction, it's it's not something that you know. I'm not saying we're not rushing into it, but no, I'm just saying that it, it, it is it, it is a constant work in progress. And mm -hmm. you know, the people I've I've met up in Wallingford, I mean, it's a beautiful facility. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely gorgeous, um, but it took them time to get it together mm -hmm. and to make it right, so that it was because they went through the same challenges as we did. It's it's not acceptable here. It's acceptable right. here, but it's not acceptable because of this. Right. So. Um, they had a little bit of advantage to us is that they have more open space than we do. Uh, but when they put it together, they they did a nice job with it. South Windsor is the same thing, even though it keeps coming up in the in the uh, um, discussion. the discussion that we've had in the past. Um, they did the same thing. They by they they worked on it for many many months before they they nailed it down and got it together. Uh, there are a couple of places I have visited where they didn't get it together, and um, it looks people don't use it. And so, rather than putting together something that people aren't going to use, we should put together something that they are going to use and be proud of what they have, and then we maintain it properly. But it looks like it looks like we've got it pretty much down to narrow down to two. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's really going to be a choice of of one or the other. So. I Let's think we make a recommendation set, set to a date. set a date to meet to walk up planes and mm -hmm. also Let's walk them both upper yeah, upper Yeah, We can pedals. do the same this yeah. And then Let's um, do them both again just so in October we could and then we could decision. move on it. Yeah. Well, and if it was at Peddlers, what parking there that has to be established whereas Nut Plains already has the There's parking. There's a bit of some it wouldn't be as as much. We'd have to do some, but it's a good level mm -hmm. spot, so it wouldn't be too hard. We had walked it's already in parking there, and mm -hmm. there's some parking there. Well, the parking would be in competition with those who would play lacrosse there. That's the thing mm -hmm. that we may have to I consider. I think we have to expand parking some, yeah. you know, uh, and there's there's room to do it right at where we're talking about, right adjacent to the dog park, if that's where the dog park goes. I mean, be. 15 feet away, it'll be right there. So yeah, we also um, have putting to. all the dogs in one area, <laughs> gloss property people already use. I'm 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 being a NIMBY, and I, well, I shouldn't show the chip on my shoulder, but I'm going to be right in the middle between the dog park and the dog yipping at 5:30 going down to gloss property in the morning to walk. And My house is right in the middle of those two spots, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm being a NIMBY like everybody else in town has been for certain things. Well, I think well, at this I'm point we have to look at that. both properties. So look at both those are properties. Two mm -hmm. I think we can make yeah. decisions according to what but according to the properties. Three recommendations. You're talking about two. Which one have you omitted? Which one have you been disqualified? Baller, Baller. 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 because of the security at the school. Right. Well, we have security concerns as well. Mm -hmm. and you have, and you're but there's, but it's it's school property. It, it, we we yeah. it's mm -hmm. a it's a different kind of concern. Right. You, you just disqualified one of the recommendations. It sounds like well, we didn't. Right. The board of selectmen seems to feel that that's not a and suitable site because of the restrictions for security within the school um, protocol. In, in some of the research that I've done on this, I found a website called bringfido.com, and it's essentially a. Um, <clears throat> It's a service that is put together for dog owners, uh, sort of like an Expedia for dog people when they travel and whatever, but they have a, a listing in Connecticut of off-leash dog parks in Connecticut, and they list the top 10. They give pictures of them, but just to give you an idea of where we are and standing with other towns in Connecticut, there are 38 other towns in Connecticut that have committed dog parks. Mm -hmm. Um, surprisingly, a large percentage of them are in Fairfield, Fairfield County uh, because, and, and they have more densely populated towns than we do. So there are compromises that are going to be made with regard to where and when we put this together. Um, when you go into the town of Rowayton, Rowayton can't be much larger than the area uh, south of 
the post road yeah, and the green. Small mm -hmm. It's a very small section of, uh, of, of Fairfield. So um, to think that not anybody is going to be impacted is going to be, um, you know, it's, 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 it's an impossibility. So, it's, um, you know, it, as I said, if, if I, fortunately I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm working down in Fairfield County right now, I'm trying to stop at some of these places along the way. Great. Um, a couple of them are pretty, uh, what they did is they took a spare, they took the, the one in Stanford is adjacent to the Public Works Department. So they took spare space that was there, they leveled it out and put a dog park there. Well, aesthetically, it doesn't look very nice because you got all these dump trucks and stuff uh, hanging around there. <coughs> and they they tried to follow the contour of the land. It wasn't very friendly. It's one of those places that they put together. Nobody's using it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas, the, again, I hate to use up South Windsor, but um, it's people are using it. And that was the whole purpose of it. The one in Glastonbury is huge. Yeah, I've seen that one. But nobody's using it. I mean, the, I was there three yeah. times, and and uh, earlier this spring there were two dog owners there, and that's because it is so far to walk back to it from the parking area where they had the boathouse and they had the other fields. People are just too tired to take their dogs out to uh, to the dog park, even though it's 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 in this, in this place that's not affecting anybody. It's because and because it's not affecting anybody, nobody uses it. Right. So there has to be a, a level of convenience as so, to what we're going to be providing. All right. Um, so considering that it's getting darker earlier and people yep. do work, would a, would a Saturday morning work for people or a Sunday afternoon? or yeah. Would that be mm -hmm. better? Either one. Rick, I mean, how, how do you feel about that? Whatever, whatever day is good for you folks. The next two Saturday mornings do not work for me. Well, then the next, they're fair weekends. No, yeah, no, no, that's not going to work for anybody. Yeah, they won't work for anybody. No, that's not going to work for anybody. Um, but how about, the, how about this? You've got your comment. How about, how about this Saturday? A how about a Monday? Uh, we usually meet okay. now. So uh, what about next Monday, the 21st? We would start at one of the parks and um, meet we started at 6.30 time. Yeah. Or 6 o'clock time, we could bump it up to 6. Can we bump it up to 6? Can people that do that? Work? Because it's already getting a little... Even if you wanted to do 5.30, I could do 5.30. 5.30 would be fine. Okay. So 5.30 on the 21st, uh, which one do we want to start at? Let's start at... Um, we'll have cocktails no. at Judy's house, and then we'll do... Uh, <laughs> 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 what, why don't we start at Peddler's? I was just going to say... Don't worry, happened. we'll still have cocktails at your house. I was going to say, let's start at Peddler's. That's closer to the highway. At 5.30. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. Can I ask a question? I don't know if it's allowed. Well, technically, no, but go ahead. No, we just have a really enthusiastic group of volunteers, and um, there's a group of high school kids. They wanted to do something because we have a good audience this weekend with the Gilford Fair, and they wanted to try to collect a lot more volunteers and have some sort of exposure for a proposed dog park. So I don't know if that's jumping the gun. It's just we're going to lose that audience after this weekend. They're kind of hoping a decision was going to be made tonight. So we can't make yeah. Um I think it's, is it safe to say we will have a dog park? No. no. Somewhere in town, no? I think we have to wait we're, until we... are definitely supportive of it. We're definitely we're supportive of it, yes. Of where it's going to go, I think, at this point. I think it's premature. Mm -hmm. You could collect names. And like John you know, said, emails and at least want to get in touch with them after. You want it done properly and make sure it's going to be used not something we're going to rush right. into and then it's not going to be used for anyone. But I, I understand your concern. Do, you don't yeah. want to lose the people who are enthusiastic. Right. So right. I, I would suggest maybe just collecting names, emails, contacts. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, we're for Nut Flames, our committee. Okay. Um, it's a great, great spot. It's really not, um, it's, it's, it's far enough away from Gossett. I don't think there's going to be confusion there. Um, Dog parks aren't noisy. I was at the Clinton one tonight. There was 20 dogs running around wrestling, rougher than I've ever seen them. No dog was barking. You know, they say hello in the beginning, a couple of them, but most don't. Right. It's really not noisy. Right. And it's, 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 um, it goes in time, so 4 o'clock is a busy time. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there's no one there. Mm -hmm. how, you know, how, so it's, how close is this to the lacrosse fields? Probably? It's the beginning of the parking lot. In the, the so there's going to be a competition for parking. Oh, let's let's go there and look at it before we assume. Let's let's go take a look before we make too many assumptions. If that helps, Madame. 
for um, the weekend? Is there any other night this week? That, or you want to wait to do it on a Saturday sometime? Or we couldn't make a decision it? anyway mm -mm. until we had a Just full meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're going to meet the 21st at Paddler's at 530. 5.30. 5.30. Yep. And then we'll go to yeah. the I mean, we can't call a special meeting at this point in time this no. this week. So, yeah, yeah. I just like to make make one point um, for myself with regard to the people out there who are they're wondering why we're putting so much effort into this uh, for a dog park. Um, even within my own household, we have conflict as to whether or not this is a, um, a an important thing to do. I believe it is. Others do not, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, especially the fact that you know they did I, I did get dinner tonight, but boy, I tell you, it was rushed. Um, I look at it this way: is that we are a Parks and Recreation Department, and it's not just something that we're putting together for a small select group group of people. I mean, we have dedicated resources for tennis, uh, we have it for track and field, we have it for softball, baseball, we have it for a lot of different sports and a lot of different activities. And I just feel that it's it's. Um, when my daughter comes to visit, she brings her three dogs with her, and I do not want to criminalize her by taking her someplace and letting her let her dogs run loose. If we had a dog park, that would be an adequate uh, or a perfect place for her to go. But at the same time, it, it is something that I think, as a part of the town, it would it would be an enhancement towards the recreation yeah. facility that we provide to all of our townspeople. So mm -hmm. I just think Thank we you. need to, rather than be rushed, be thoughtful about mm -hmm. everything right. we're doing here. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're very thoughtful in everything that we propose mm -hmm. here or agree to, and I think we should continue to do that. So the word is deliberate. Deliberate. Yes. Deliberate. <laughs> and the like thought. Thought. Okay, oh. so let's. Like whoop, excuse me. As long as they don't. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> All right, <laughs> guys. A question to the committee: Is the public invited to participate in these walks? Or would they interfere with the operation of the committee? I think, I think it needs to be just the uh, park and rec usually. When we take these walks, usually we just take them as the commission. Mm -hmm. But you're certainly welcome to go and, and walk them on Well, I, I think if the time is posted on the town website that there would be a walk at, quote, Nut Plains or Peddlers at a certain time, if anyone interested, you know, that way you could probably get immediate feedback from the public at that time, you know? Okay. Um, in regards to the Goss property, you have to remember that's a gated property on the western portion of it. So you have to park your car prior to the bridge and then you have to go around the gate. Oh, no, I know. I, I live right there. I know that, but I'm saying that is a gated property, so keep that in mind. What's so that? What do you mean? There's a gate that stops a vehicle from going oh. in there mm -hmm. to a certain point. Same point. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. All right. But it's not a far walk okay. to the field with the dogs. All right. I think we're done with the dog park. Let's move on to the <coughs> proposal to name the Guilford High School baseball field for okay. Ralph Chapani. How are we doing with that? Well, uh, I spoke with um, Terry Diandella, who is the admin for, mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the Board of Ed. Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. And the original request was put on the June agenda, but it was not acted upon. Okay. And then it was not on the July and August agenda. So I spoke with her earlier in August, and it is definitely on the agenda for tomorrow's Terrific. Board of Education meeting. Awesome. So the process that comes with this is that they will read our um, recommendation to have uh, Ralph's name put um, on for a naming. They will form a committee. Uh, they will discuss uh, all options, and then we'll come to a conclusion. I ask that if I will attend the Board of Ed meeting tomorrow. Hopefully I will get there in time. But I, I plan to go to the Board of Ed meeting tomorrow to express our desire to have uh, Ralph's name on the on the baseball field. Thank at, you. At this point, I don't know if there's any other competition for any other names to go up there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if I get a chance to speak there, I will state our case that it should be something that would be most honorable for for Ralph's legacy here in town. What time is the meeting? Thank you. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Usually it's seven, and it's a rolling place where they visit, so I don't mm -hmm. know where it is now, now, tomorrow night. So I have to. Uh, it's usually the they post that on their, website. On their website. I have an yeah. email from Terry telling me where it is, but I didn't yeah. get a chance to open it up. Uh, okay. But I will. Uh, it is going to be on the agenda for tomorrow night. Great. Thank you. We appreciate you doing that for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Uh, the proposed ordinance change regarding the Coast Guard approved life jackets at swimming beaches. It's been approved. It's been approved. Uh, approved. Board Selectman meeting approved mm -hmm. it. Uh, there's a little yeah. public hearing and. Uh, there's nobody to comment either way. No. Uh, they approved it unanimously, so it'll go into effect next year. Terrific. Good. 
All right. Um, any more about the Guilford High School Science Wing Fitness Center that you want to say? We sort of covered that earlier. So, any other comments on that? Uh, the Guilford Preservation Alliance kiosk. I understand it's going to be ready this weekend. Well, you see it there. And, uh, can <laughs> yeah. You, can, Shannon, can you take the TV <laughs> over there and pan the uh, the kiosk that's over there? It looks gorgeous. It looks lovely. Yeah. And I think they're going to they're going to volunteer staffing. I believe it's Wednesdays through Sundays. And yeah, I think I read that. This Friday, they had a meeting here today with the volunteers. I think to set that up and do some training. Um, and so it's going to yeah, it's scheduled to be open starting uh, this week. So as people go to the fair parade, they can stop yeah. in at the kiosk. Yeah. Time. Are, are, Great. I know we talked about this before, but are we going to able to sequester at least one parking spot for people who drive into town so they can mm -hmm. stop there, do their investigation, and then move on? Well, we do have right in front here two spots that are, say, 10-minute spots. Yeah. Okay. So those... Well, those can be filled, too. Mm -hmm. Well... <laughs> I it's know. pretty but tight here. It's always pretty tight here. Yeah, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. what I'm, that's what I'm concerned about. Senior trips or right. to, to ban two for I think for our priority is for people to come here to the programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, however, I mean, I think even if we designated something, you'd find somebody would park there yeah. when they were desperate and there was no place else to park. So. I think you might remember when they came, uh, they, they thought the biggest use would be Saturdays and Sundays, oh, yeah. when there's a little less oh. yeah. parking yes. competition yes. here. Um, although Saturday mornings were packed, so we have you know fitness classes and gymnastics. But um, I think they thought that would be the busier times when we have less competition for the spaces here. Okay. All right, on to new business. Um, a was the Eagle Scout project at Mill Pond, and uh, Rick said the scout last minute was not able to make it. Right, but I'll just tell you what, what they want to do. He wants to build some uh, permanent benches at Mill Pond, like near the fire pit area, and then maybe one. Kind of near the the hill, so if people want to just sit and you know, look at the wildlife there, or whatever. Um, I thought it was a great idea. I told me he had to come to the commission for official approval. Um, and he sent me an email today. He, he does a couple other things. He has got to do with his troop approvals there first before he comes okay. here. Okay. So he'll find you on the agenda for the October. So we'll just look out for him. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a great project. Yeah. So. yeah. And the Grass Island Shack. And if you noticed in your packet, there was also <laughs> yeah. a little attachment yeah. that tells us that we are responsible for chaffinch and grass islands. I'd like to commend the person who found that from 41 years ago. <laughs> years ago. Uh, well, Mr. Bullard, we still Mr. Have Bullard who was on the... Uh, well, Joe Moss has said to me, so we need to hear from Karen or somebody in the office and pull it out. Uh, this man, really they dug out. deep for that. Better to do. It's great. I realize this is tight. You know, this yeah. Is the, hey. <laughs> and there's not one mistake on yeah. here. Either. And it's That's still amazing. valid. Yeah. From the selectman meeting in, in 1970. Mm. If you look at the top, I October 9th, 1970. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless <laughs> So, Rick, you want to give us a little background yeah. on why this is on our so agenda? If you, if you go to the marina, you look at it, it's, it's tilting. It's leaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no doubt. So the facilities department, they want to put a uh, construction snow fence on it with big signs saying, you know, keep off, you know, because, I mean, kids get up there and they, have you, know, seen they the, want to have you seen they the picture with them. the two kids on the, on the roof? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I was kayaking one day by there on a Saturday and there were three girls up on the roof and they yep. told why I was and said, it's leaning, you got to get off. And they mm -hmm. did, but um, it's in very, it needs work. It, it needs some serious work, and um, everybody knows it's iconic, and there's no way that anybody wants that thing to dilapidate mm -hmm. or fall down or, or, you know, blow away. Um, but, you know, you think about it, I don't want to get philosophical here, but it's it's really symbolic of a lot about, I think, Guilford's character in a lot of ways, because that thing mm -hmm. withstood hurricanes. Every, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, there were houses that collapsed during Sandy and, and right. um, Irene. And, and that was standing through all that. I think it's because it's so wide open that the mm -hmm. breezes went right through it. But but it, it's an important yeah, part of Guilford. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a gentleman, uh, Tim Sperry, who first uh, approached Joe. And I had a meeting with Tim and Joe um, about he wanted to do some fundraising, SOS, Save Our Shack. And then about a week later, I think Joe got a call from um, uh, a Boy Scout who was interested in it as an Eagle project. And there are some architects in the troop that would that he said be willing to look at it and design what do you need to do we can't if you, if you go in there you'll see underneath it there have been boards nailed and screwed yes, to it and yeah, a lot mm -hmm. of band-aid things to try to keep it Just together keep it together uh, but it's it's in a pretty bad state of uh 
almost collapsed now. And um, so there are there are two groups that are going to work together: the scout group and uh, Tim Sperry, his whoever he has involved. They're going to work on doing some fundraising. Great. And I think the first step, uh, in fact, <coughs> Steve Nidor, facilities manager, and I went out uh, Friday with uh, this Boy Scout and his father um, to kind of take a better, closer look at it and you know what has to get done and so on. And, it, I mean, it, it is a, it's a huge project for an Eagle Scout. It's probably about four Eagle Scout projects. Yeah. Uh, really one of them could be the fundraising, one could be painting it, one, you know, the, doing the roof. I mean, there's a lot to be done there. But whatever involvement they're going to have, it's going to start with some fundraising and probably start with some architectural design of what has to be done to mm -hmm. make this right. Um, and then maybe have a gar target goal of what kind of money has to be raised to do it. And maybe eventually some money is, is in the budget. But, I think for now they're going to, you know, try to raise some money. So that's where it is. It's it's under it's under us uh, because we Grass Island is according to mm -hmm. the minutes of the, the meeting in 1970. Do you uh, know if they're going to try to salvage it, or or are they going to have to rebuild it, or where are they going to? I think salvage as much as possible so yeah. it has that they same have, yeah. look. Mm -hmm. um, but the, it needs all new decking. The, you know, the deck is boards are. I mean, mm -hmm. it's dangerous to walk on. That's why they put the fence around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, like I said, it's leaning. If a big windstorm might knock the thing over. You know, I don't think we want that to happen. So, um, it's going to be a lot of structural work, trying to maintain as much of the existing look as possible. I think, again, maybe all, all new decking, but hope maybe the sides stay the same. You know, the, the shape of it. The interior. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's going to be up to the you know architects. They'll be well beyond me that would make that determination. But Steve has been great. Uh, Steve Nidor for the facilities department. Um, it's really it's under well they have to bring their plan they've, to us they've done a lot to help us with you know really steve's done everything so far yeah i think eventually whatever the plan is you know I it's think going to have to come before here. the commission yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 why anything that needs to be done lately comes over to park and rec are we just so awesome that we get well it's That's not it. lately it's just <laughs> we since, were since 1970 it's been under well, they, they were glad well. to assume their responsibility a story, but it just seems yeah. like every time something needs to be taken care of, Park and Rec will do it. And that's because well, we awesome. get things done, Judy. Come on, we're <laughs> the Department of Parks and Cooperation. <laughs> Parks and Cooperation <laughs> and Doability. <laughs> okay, the uh, historic sign at Rollwood Park. Okay, oh, so Rollwood Park is also under our jurisdiction, as we, I think you know, <laughs> that was handed over yes. to us uh, by the Gar Guilford Garden Club. and. June of 2014 as part of the, the uh, 375th celebration that was put under our, uh, and we, we've always mowed it anyway, but now it's kind of more officially a park because of all the work that the Garden Club has done to improve it there. Uh, but so one of the things we, we, we had a meeting, the Garden Club members and Mike McBride from the uh, museum, Whitfield Museum, mm -hmm. and I had to talk about, uh, Mike said he always gets people asking, what is, what is that? What is that? What is that? <laughs> yeah, the chimney. Uh, it's, it's Guilford Stonehenge. Oh. Um, and so we got talking, well, maybe we should put a historic sign there saying what this is and why it's important to get. But the governor lived in that house and it was a 26 acre farm and you know all these outbuildings and whatever. And so we're actually, uh, if anybody's interested, we're, we're going to meet on, uh, I have to double check, I think Wednesday at 2 30 at the Whitfield Museum with a representative or two from the Garden Club, Joel Heelander and Mike mm -hmm. McBride. They're going to write up whatever history should go on that sign, and oh, some photos right. and whatever. And on top of that, George Page is willing to pay for the sign. He's going to fund it. Oh, Turns nice. out his grandfather or great-grandfather was the caretaker of the farm. Oh, wow. And so he's interested in paying for it. So he's going to... Great, wonderful. He's offering yeah. to pay for the sign. So I think he's going to come to that meeting also. I don't think we're at a point yet where the sign is going to be purchased and built. We've got to figure out what's going on. That's up to Mike and Joel to figure that out. Right. But it'll be like a typical, like you yeah. see in a state yeah. park or a national park, a historical a historic marker, like a marker kind of sign. Nice. It'll be attractive and something that's really done nice. right. Good. Okay. So that meeting will be at the Whitfield Museum on Wednesday. I'm, at I'm fairly sure it's at 2.30 if anybody's interested in that. Okay. It's going to be quite the historical section of town. Yeah. Nice, quite nice. nice. Okay, uh, purchase of a ball field machine. We have talked about this, so. All right, so why I put that in there now is yeah. that the machine, as you 
you may recall the last two years we put it in our budget. The Board of Selectmen had approved it, but not to come out of the budget. It wanted to come out of our program account. The Commission has pushed back and said, well, no, it's a piece of equipment, machinery. Why should it come out of the program account? We did that for two years in a row now. And the one that I want to replace, the, it's the first piece of equipment that I bought for the name of this guy, or I asked the Commission to purchase when I first came here in 1991. And uh, we have two of them, but this, this one is, how many years is that? <laughs> a lot. 24 years old? 24 years old now? Yeah. Oh. And uh, it's really on its last legs, and I don't know how much more the, the uh, public works mechanics to do to keep the thing operating. It's used every day uh, during the, well, as you know, the ball field season is a lot mm -hmm. longer now, uh, three seasons. Um, but I went uh, with a couple of our maintenance guys to Madison on Friday. They have a different machine. It's about depending on what options, uh, amenities, we, uh, attachments we get. Um, it's about, uh, could be ten to $15,000 less than what we put in the budget. It's a whole different kind of machine. It has a lot more features, a more attachments that you can get for it. The guys in Madison love it. They've got three of them. Uh, and uh, I think their oldest one isn't old, it's only a year or two years old, but they love it. They, they, uh, uh, our guys demoed it, they tried it, they worked with it, um, and, and um, the two guys who went with me liked it too. And Tony and one of our other guys had made her another time to look at it, so I think all of our full-time guys have seen this now. They all like it. Um, our program it? account is in very good shape. Um, I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I can tell you we, we're, in, we're in very good shape. It's just a question of do we do we justify purchasing a piece of equipment out of program funds? It benefits the community. It doesn't benefit Parks and Rec directly. It doesn't, you know, it's not, I mean, it's money that came from camp and aerobics and, you know, swim lessons and whatever else. Um, but there are a lot of kids that use But it benefits our, our sports kids. programs. Mm -hmm. It's a sports program. That's not a Parks and Rec sports program, but Little League, uh, American so Legion, Senior Baseball, High Parks School, I mean, all those school. groups would benefit from it. Uh, it, again, it's kind of a philosophical question, uh, uh, but having said that, I guess there is a little bit of a precedent. We were, um, we had to buy a uh, one of our six foot riding mowers out of, out of that program account, probably about eight or ten years ago. There was not money in the budget. We needed one. The commission decided let's let's do this and purchase it. So uh, I, I'm just I guess I'm making a request that if if if, if you're um, in favor of doing this, then we would, I'd like to say up to $18,000. It's 15000 I think, without any attachments. Or mm -hmm. It comes with a, a few basic, like a drag mat and a, um, accessories. Uh, tied for, for scraping it up, but there are other accessories that we can get um, to get us started. In the future, we want to buy some more that we can get them out of our equipment account. Just so you said question. it was ten to $15,000 less than the budgeted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's twenty six thousand is what's budgeted, okay. and I think they're co closer to around twenty eight, twenty eight to thirty thousand now, with the kind of tax which we want. Wow. So it's fixing. So we're saying fifteen to twenty, fifteen to eighteen thousand mm -hmm. is probably what we would need right now. When we do, when we approve the bills and you have your repairs down here, do you segregate each repair to each piece of equipment? I don't. Public Works says we could do it. We get it, but I get a printout from them. Like an audit of every piece of equipment. I think the, uh, the justification for doing this is that we see a growing trend of repairs for the existing equipment. Absolutely. That this would be a way to offset and decrease the repair account by having a newer piece of equipment. And right. Public Works can supply that for us. I think that would go a long way in getting uh, quick approval for this. I don't see a problem with it. I think, no. I think it's just going to help all the program. It's going to help everybody. Why not? We need we need the machine. That's the way of getting it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling. Not to mention that it saves for the cost, and it helps our guys out. It is, it is, I think it's more efficient than what we have now too. Yeah, well, it's almost a no-brainer. Okay. All right. So we so do need a motion. I'll make a motion to um, allow up. Do we want to say 18. up to eighteen thousand for the purchase of the ball field machine? Second. Uh, to be paid through the program program account. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Okay, any more discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 
post. Any abstentions? I doubt. Okay. All right, Rick, you can, you can purchase that. And while you're purchasing that, you can look at the uh, dump truck. Dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> you need a dump truck to bring I bet it home. That's <laughs> so, so the dump truck, that's, that's in the budget. <laughs> um, just to let you know, so we, there was a state, state contract with uh, Crowley Ford. Uh, Public Works just recently ordered a, a, a similar truck, an F-550 from them. So technically, under state, uh, under the town's purchasing policy, if somebody has a state bid, a state contract, you can just buy it from that company. You don't have to go out to bid. So I, uh, I am gonna, with your permission, I, I would like to write a letter to the Board of Selectmen to get on their next agenda to go forward with this. Mm -hmm. I, I hope if we get order now, we might have it by snow season. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, we're budgeted for 80000 and this is a little under 78000 um, 7872, I think actually, it's closer to 77,000. Under 78,000, so it's 2,000 or more less than what we have budget, and that's with all the features that we want on it. Um, it would have a stainless steel body, which we were really pushing for, uh, because the dump trucks we currently have, the, the cabin chassis outlast the body. The bodies rot out, you know, especially over the course of a winter with salt sand in there. You yeah. know, the guys rinse them out periodically; they just they get eaten away. So. It would have a stainless steel body, well, very similar to what Public Works is getting. Uh, it has the, the plow attached to it we want, uh, comes with a sander. I mean, all the features that we would need. We would not with. have to retrofit anything. We would not. Okay. We would not. So, um, uh, I don't know if you need to officially vote on it, but it's right. I think we, we already officially you know, voted on it when it went well, to the budget. Yeah. So, we're, we're, budget. It's, so, it's been approved. So, so I'll let you know. I want to go forward with that. I go to the Board of Selectmen to get that approval. That's great. Good. Okay. Okay. Okay, F, sadly, mm. the Nut Plains Park sign has been vandalized, and I guess Rick told me it was vandalized, totally They're, destroyed. I mean, they like took a baseball bat to it or something. It's in pieces and pieces and pieces. Oh, um, and so we reported to the police department, they have a picture of it. You know, An insurance or something? Does insurance pay for that? I don't, I think a deductible. Mm -hmm. is, uh, that way is higher than a sign. See, yeah. it's a bad neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need some dogs here to protect that neighborhood. <laughs> well, that's true. If the dog park was there and the people were watching, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> so so they're the, walking their dogs. It's not going to be at night when it probably happens. <laughs> so what? Um, so I think I don't so know we what do need to replace it. I think at some point we got to do something. I don't we know do need to replace material. it. Or, um, I mean, it's a beautiful sign. The material. We just have all those. Is it the logos. same as? Is it the same as all the other signs yeah. that we have? Identical. The one so we have the logos, to, so they yeah. all matched, and so we yeah. have to if we have to replace it with yeah. that sign. I mean, I think we can't just not replace no. it. Oh yeah, and it's that feels used a lot. It needs to be replaced. All our parks. Yeah. 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 People from people out of town need this sign it. in order to yeah. find the field. Yeah. yeah. And we have an ultimate yeah. frisbee group play there now on yeah. on uh, Saturdays. It's one of our programs. So they do to get you started. So we have to do it. So yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Okay, and uh, lastly, touring the park, uh, the park's garage. We've always gone to the parks. We have mm -hmm. never gone to the garage to look at all of our equipment. So Rick thinks that it would be a great idea for us to go and take a look at all of our equipment. A little refresh room, please, sir. <laughs> um, There's a water thing there. Oh, good. I'll, I'll tell you that one. <laughs> um, do we have a... Uh, We're thinking of date. before the meeting in October. Kind of like when we do the park walk, you know, instead of a park, we'll go to the garage. Right. Maybe half an hour, hour before, whatever. It wouldn't take a long time to tour it, but, and I'll ask Tony to be there. He can kind of talk about the different equipment. That's about the time we start putting the budget together anyway. So mm -hmm. if there's some equipment, you can see what we're talking about, the holes yeah. in the trucks. You have a better idea of what we're, what we're saying we need to replace some of these things. Okay. Why don't we compromise at 545? Okay. That'll give us for about 45 minutes to... On the 5th? What's that date? On the 5th? October 5th. Will yes. somebody send a reminder? Yes, yeah. definitely. I'll try to put it on my calendar, but I And don't for retain. people who don't know where the garage is, 47 driveway. So it's the end okay, of Okay, guys, 47 Old driveway. Street. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go past the, you know, the, the uh, Whitfield Museum, the end of Old Whitfield Street before you get to the train station, take a left. It's a little road called mm -hmm. driveway. Mm -hmm. The first building down there that's town is it's public works. So see, it'll say 47 driveway. There are gas pumps. You go past the gas pumps to the next set of buildings. There's a gate that will will be open, um, and uh, you'll see the green trucks right out there. Um, it's kind of a L-shaped, right right at the where the where the L meets. 
But you'll see, there'll be trucks here. We'll have the trucks out, right. and I'll be there. You'll see where it is. Okay. Before we adjourn, I just have a I was just going to ask if we had any of the new business. Um, on the chain of emails regarding the stone bench at. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I forgot to get that out. Yes. Yes, I was going to say, uh, are we in agreement as to how that's going to be put together for us? Thanks for that. I totally forgot about putting that on here. Um, yeah, I think I think the majority said go with it. The uh, the difference was it was a little different from the other, the same design, everything, but it had a, like a more of a rough hewn edges on it. And I think there was a, somebody had asked about the safety of the the edges because people get cut on it. And I asked the um, uh, Mrs. Berniger to check that out with uh, Shelley Brothers. I, evidently, they made that kind of bench. They said there's never been any issues right. with mm -hmm. it. So, so it's a go. Yeah. Good. And you've got a site for it. Yeah. Yeah. We picked a spot. Uh, I don't remember where it was now. <laughs> well, we'll just go there and look for it someday. Yeah. Oh, I think it was. Uh, I can't believe I have Dawn. That's a light here. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, and she knows where it is. <laughs> that's okay. We'll find it. Uh, All right. I any also other wanted business? to say okay. under new business. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know it was referenced in Rick's um, notes, um, but that I wanted to let everyone know that the boulder is officially installed at Jacob's Beach okay. with the plaque attached, um, and it looks beautiful. And the boulder came from the stump dome. Yeah. Terrific. So, all right, so I'll have to go down and check it out. It looks beautiful. And um, uh, Will Thompson came over and met Rick and myself, and we... The fella from uh, Shelley Brothers was very uh, helpful and agreeable. He, he, you know, we did a little to the left, a little to very the patient. right. <laughs> he was very patient with us, but we got it in the place that we felt that it was the best. So yeah, Sue, thank you for being that there too. You, you and Will, with your eyes, you know, yeah. Yeah. she said, "What do you think?" I said, "Well, I don't know. It's a, it's a boulder <laughs> with a black in it, <laughs> but it came um, out nice." But it looks great. So yeah. I, I um, recommend everybody go down, oh, and look at it, and that great. that. Plaques out on Rick's desk for a long time. Now you yeah. have a lot of space on your desk. Yeah, uh, but it, it's up. Yeah. All right. I the have people. one question about lights at Guilford Lakes. Do those lights work that are on the tennis, tennis courts? Or how do you get That's so the that school they do work? Runs those so. Um, That's the school. Again. Yeah. Have they not been on or? Well, they now used to that be fall's on. coming and there's pickleball in the evening. People are going, well, I can't get there, and it's going to be dark at 7 o'clock. Oh, so so I was wondering about how do you contact, or should I talk to you later about how to contact yeah. people to... We could just ask them. Find. They're on timers, anyway, so yeah. we just ask them to leave them on until, you know, 8 or 9 o'clock or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion second. to adjourn. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.